This video is about unusual forms of computation. It is well known that computers can do computations. But how about something that does not resemble a computer at all, like, for example, colorful bathroom tiles? Can we use bathroom tiles to do computations too? To answer this question, let us quickly define what we mean by bathroom tiles. A bathroom tile is simply a square. Each tile has a color and a specific code on every of its four edges. This code can be a letter, a number, or a combination of these. We are not allowed to rotate or flip a tile when placing it. So the code on top always stays on top. Two tiles can only be placed next to each other if their touching side has the same code. For example, these two tiles can be placed next to each other because they both have a two at the edge where they meet. But these two tiles cannot be placed next to each other, since one code is two and the other three. Note that these two tiles cannot be placed next to each other in any way, neither horizontally nor vertically, since tiles cannot be rotated or flipped. Our goal is to tile a given color pattern or shape with a finite set of tiles. The good news is that we can make an arbitrary number of copies of each of the given tiles. Apart from building specific patterns or shapes, we can also ask questions about infinity, since we have an infinite amount of copies of each tile. For instance, given the blue, the purple, and the green tile, does there exist a correct infinite tiling? In other words, does there exist a tiling with arbitrary copies of these three tiles that covers the whole infinite plane? Please pause the video and think about this for a minute. The answer is yes. The simplest correct infinite tiling is a periodic tiling. A tiling is periodic when the same pattern of tiles keeps repeating, like this. In a periodic tiling, we tile a rectangle such that the tiling within this rectangle is correct, and also allows to place two such rectangles next to each other, left connects with right, and top connects with bottom. If this is all possible, then we can cover the entire plane with copies of this rectangle. If a periodic tiling exists, we can find it in finite time. How? We take every possible rectangle size w by h, in an increasing order according to the sum w plus h. First, 1 by 1, then 1 by 2 and 2 by 1, then 1 by 3, 2 by 2 and 3 by 1, and so on. For each rectangle size, we try all possible tilings and check their correctness. If we have a finite number of tiles to place, this only takes a finite amount of time for each rectangle. We need to check every combination of rectangles smaller than the solution rectangle and thus at most a finite number of rectangles. Altogether, finding such a rectangle can be done in finite time. But what if the given set of tiles does not admit a periodic tiling? Is it still possible to tile the infinite plane? The answer to this is yes, but we need a short detour to computation to understand this connection. At first glance, tiling an infinite plane seems to have no connection to computation. However, from a computational point of view, tiling a plane is equivalent to a famous model of computation, the Turing machine. We want to try to simulate a given Turing machine with a wisely selected set of tiles. But how do tiles need to be designed to run such a Turing machine? The main idea of the simulation is that each row of the tiling describes the complete state of the tape of a Turing machine in a specific time step, with the top row corresponding to time step 0, the initial tape. The row immediately below corresponds to time step 1, and so on. We can design the tiles carefully such that given a specific row, the only possible tiling of the row directly below is the next configuration of the Turing machine. If the Turing machine runs forever, this will give us a tiling for the lower half of the infinite plane. The upper half can be done similarly, but for simplicity we ignore the upper half in this video. Most of our tiles have no color. These normal tiles allow us to automatically copy the content of the tape into the row below, for the next computation step. To keep track of the tape pointer and the current state, we use some additional tiles with color. If, for example, we have a transition from state S1 to S2 that also replaces a 0 by a 1 on the tape and moves the tape pointer one step to the right, then we can describe this behavior with this blue tile. So the colors have no purpose but to make it easier for us to understand what is going on since the action is happening in the colored tiles. The number of tiles we need to simulate a Turing machine is limited by the tape symbols, the number of states and the transitions. Since a Turing machine is finite, we only need a finite number of tiles. 
As said before, the top row is simply the tape input of the Turing machine. Let's try this with an example. A simple example of a Turing machine in action is incrementing a number. For incrementing a number, we have two states, a starting state S0 and a halting state SH. Here are the two transitions out of state S0. Let's translate these states and transitions into tiles. First, let us start with the simple tiles, used to transfer unchanged values one row down. We need these for all three symbols of our tape, 0, 1, and bottom. For the transitions of state S0, we need to create six special tiles, three blue tiles that change the values on the tape, and three green tiles to move the pointer. If we are in state S0, and the tape pointer is on the current tile, and the tape at the pointer position is 1, the transition tells us that we need to change the tape at this position to a 0. Since the tape pointer is then moved to the right, but stays in state S0, we add S0 at the right edge of this tile. This code S0 will make sure that only special tiles can connect on the right of this tile. On the other hand, if we read a 0 or a bottom, we should write 1 and halt. These two tiles do exactly that. They do halt because there is no transition out of the halting state SH. Likewise, there is no tile with a tuple with SH on top, so nothing can be added below such a tile. While pretty much all tiles on the infinite tape just have their current tape symbol on top and bottom, and an empty code left and right, the tiles near the pointer are more interesting. In particular, the code on top of the pointer tile is a tuple of current state and current tape symbol. Now we add three more tiles to connect to the tile with S0 on the right. All these green tiles have S0 on the left. These green tiles move the pointer one tile to the right, by having the correct tuple state on the bottom, but not changing the tape. So these are all the nine tiles we need to simulate our increment Turing machine. Let's see it in action. The input tape is given in the first row. We colored these tiles red, since they are already given before we start the simulation of the Turing machine. These red tiles have a binary encoding of the number 11, starting with the least significant bit on the left side, so 1011 in reverse. The Turing machine is initially in state S0. So you can imagine that the pointer of the Turing machine is on the cell with the tuple code S0,1 on the bottom. The tape is infinite in both directions. So we have infinitely many bottom tiles to the left and to the right of these tiles in the first row. Now we start the Turing machine, and we place the tiles of the next row. Below the bottom tile, and the infinitely many bottom tiles to the left of it, we can only place a bottom tile. Then we need a tile that matches with the bottom of the second tile, and only the first blue tile works. Because of the S0 on the right edge, we need to choose a green tile. The red tile above has a 1 at the bottom, so only the second green tile works here. And then we add a 0 and a 1 tile, and then infinitely many bottom tiles. Notice that we had no choice what to put down, there was always exactly one matching tile. This is a good time to get familiar with the concept. Please pause the video and try to add the next rows to our tiling. So here is the solution. We basically always, add, the single matching blue tile below the green tile, and then a green tile next to that to move the pointer. The last row of the tiling reads reversed 1100, which is the binary representation of 12. The incrementation worked. Amazing! We can do actual computations with a set of bathroom tiles. The last row is also special, since we cannot add a tile below the blue tile anymore, as there is no tile among our nine tiles that connects to the bottom of that blue tile. This is where the Turing machine halts, and this is where the tiling stops. In general, we design the tiles according to the states and transitions of a Turing machine. If the Turing machine halts after k steps, then our tiling stops after k rows, and the output tape of the Turing machine is the same as the last row of the tiling. On the other hand, if the Turing machine runs forever, then there is always a next configuration, so the tile set allows us to tile the entire lower half of the plane. For some Turing machines it cannot be determined whether they halt, and likewise, it cannot be determined whether a given set of tiles allows for a non-periodic infinite tiling. In other words, because the halting problem on a Turing machine is undecidable, the infinite tiling problem is also undecidable. There are other models of computation on grids. 
A popular example is Game of Life. In Game of Life, each cell is in one of two states, black and white. Black cells are alive, and white cells are dead. In each step, all the cells update their state simultaneously, following two simple rules. If the cell is black and has exactly two or three black neighbors among its eight neighboring cells, including the diagonal neighbors, then the cell remains black. If a black cell has less than two black neighbors, or more than three, the black cell turns white. If the cell is white and has exactly three black neighbors among its eight neighboring cells, it is resurrected and turns black. All the cells check and update their state simultaneously. These simple rules create a surprisingly wide range of patterns. There are stable configurations which keep their shape without changing. This square of four black cells for instance remains stable because each of the four black cells has exactly three black neighbors, and each white cell has at most two black neighbors. So the black cells stay black, and the white cells stay white. There are also oscillators that keep repeating a few specific configurations periodically. There are so-called gliders that are periodic like oscillators but slowly move through the grid. And there are more complex patterns that repeatedly generate oscillators or gliders. These constructions can then be used to form gadgets on a higher abstraction level. We can create logical, and, and or gates, and ultimately a finite automaton. These tools then allow us to simulate the behavior of a Turing machine in Game of Life, similarly to the bathroom tiles before. As a result, Game of Life is Turing complete. And therefore, we can also formulate some undecidable problems in Game of Life. For example, it is undecidable if a target configuration can occur given an initial configuration. Game of Life is in fact a special case of a widespread model of computation on grids called cellular automaton. A cellular automaton consists of a grid of cells, where each cell is in a specific state. In each iteration, every cell changes its state based on the current states of the cells in its immediate neighborhood, according to some rules. Since Game of Life is just a special case of a cellular automaton, cellular automata are also Turing complete. Cellular automata can model various processes in natural sciences, ranging from physics to biology with the cells of the automaton representing anything from chemical molecules to actual biological cells. In summary, we learned that we can use bathroom tilings to do computations. Tiling the infinite plane is easy when a periodic tiling is available. But if not, it may be impossible to tell whether a given set of tiles can tile an infinite plane. This is because some sets of tiles can simulate a Turing machine, and for Turing machines it is generally undecidable whether they halt. Other models of computation exist on grids, like the Game of Life, which is an example of a cellular automaton. Thanks for watching this video.